Hi everybody, hope you're doing well. Do you have electricity today? I don't, but I'm not going to let that stop me. We're going to take a quick look at uh, how you can find the unknown interest rate under two different scenarios. One is where you are paying a lump sum at the present and you get revenue over time from that. So that's the first case A. And then the uh, second illustration we're going to look at what if you are paying over time and then you get a lump sum inflow in the future. So we'll go over an approach for how you can find the interest rate in both of those cases. And by the way, this is a hint on one of your homework problems. And so I think you'll find uh, a homework problem that's uh, similar to this and you can use the same method. So let me copy this cash flow table and paste it into Excel. The, uh, whenever you face a problem that's a little unfamiliar, my suggestion is begin with the cash flow diagram and then you can translate that into a cash flow table. So we've got year, amount, up at the top, I need to put a spot for the interest rate. That's the whole thing we're trying to find. It's unknown to begin. So I'll just put 1% as a placeholder for now. And then PV of amount. So these are the columns, and I'll use the PV function equals PV and reference that interest rate and we need to anchor the reference so that when I drag the formula down it keeps looking in that same cell B1 and by putting the dollar signs in front of the B and the 1 that locks it into place. So I'm pressing the F4 button to lock it. NPER means the number of periods and so how many years does it need to be moved back to get it to time zero. So I'll just click on the year in that case. Now next, it gives me the prompt that I should enter the amount that's a recurring payment. And I need to skip over the field for payment in this case because I'm treating each one of these amounts as just a single isolated lump sum. So it goes in the future value area. So minus because of the sign change that Excel does in these built-in financial calculations and the amount. Okay, so I close the parentheses and let me change the formatting so it's not red like I don't like it. And now I can drag that down and let me total that all up with the sum formula. And so what it has done is at 1% interest, right now we do not have balance between the inflow and the outflow. Remember that the definition of rate of return is what is the interest rate that makes the um, inflows and the outflows equal in terms of their um, cash, uh, the, the time value of money. Okay, so 1% isn't right, 2% is getting closer, 3%. Now I could keep manually adjusting that over and over, and what I'm looking for is what interest rate makes the total sum of the present value of the amounts equal to zero. But that would be tedious to do it manually. So I'll go up here to the top ribbon and do data, what if analysis, goal seek. And my goal is I want this total to be equal to zero by changing the interest rate. And so I'm telling Excel it can keep changing the interest rate over and over and over until it sees that there is zero down here in this cell that's indicated C13. So I click OK. It thinks for a moment and it finds that the rate of return is 3.73%. Okay, so I can change the number of digits that are showed there, or increase them, decrease them, but that's 3.73% the rate of return for this scenario. Now let's look at the other case, where instead of getting revenue over time, like we did in the first example, in this next example, what we're doing is we're paying over time, and then we get some future payout. Or it could be like that you're saving some money in the future that you otherwise would have had to have spent. Hint, hint. PV of amount. All right. So same thing as before. I need to create some placeholder interest rate. And I'll just start with 1% equals PV. Next, refer to the rate. So here's my rate, anchored it as before. The N value is the number of years that it needs to be going back through time to get it to the present. So click on that, skip over the payment field and minus of the amount in the future value field of the function. Close parenthesis, change the formatting. 
all right? So if it's moving zero years back in time, of course, the amount will be the same, right? Now, I'll drag that down, and then I want to total it. So the rate of return is what interest rate makes it so that there's balance between the inflow and the outflow. So it's not 1%, it's not 2%, not even 10%. I'll do data, what if analysis, goal seek, and I want this to be zero by changing the interest rate. And I'll let it rip. It optimizes, finds the uh, zero dollars, and the rate of return there is 11.77%. 11.78%. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, two different examples to illustrate how you can determine the rate of return when you have a cash flow table. Hope that helps.